Thank you very much for inviting me today. I'm not quite sure why you have invited me, but thanks anyway. And uh, I'm here to talk to you about a very exciting topic. It's called Eight is Enough. So it's a very enticing and intriguing uh, title. So what do I have enough of? Um, well, I have, an, I have enough of, it's not stress, which I'm sure that everybody has a lot. It's not a lack of recognition for hard work, which I'm sure all of you also have. Uh, it's not lack of ha housework that uh, is just kind of invading my whole space and it's just gonna make my house collapse in any second. No, it's none of those ones. So what can it be that I have enough of? I have enough of, and before I tell you, let me tell you that I entered into this very sorry state in complete command of my senses. I have enough children. I have eight children, and, um, <laughs> and of course I didn't do that on my own. <laughs> I didn't do that all that on my own. There's another guilty party. There's uh, uh, another person uh, mad enough to do the same thing as I did. And actually, that was a very important issue because uh, I already anticipated since very little for some strange reason that I wanted to have a, strange, uh, a big family. And uh, then I had to find some willing, patient, and a collaborative person who would like to do that with me. And of course, the problem is that um, let me be politically incorrect now that I'm not in the commission and yeah. say that nationality is important <laughs> because uh, I was trying to look around the different males that I could find in Europe and, um, and uh, then I looked and looked and looked and actually I got a winner and the winner was Denmark. So I got a Dane <laughs> and um, I, I had a good inkling that he was the right person because uh, we met not far away from here in Bruges, in Brugge, uh, at a student dorm and um, when I met him he was actually having his fingers inside uh, making bread, it was full of flour and uh, I said, right, that's the, that's the guy, that's the one, that's the father of my kids. So I said, Let's say that that was already sorted out, but then I have another passion, another love that was as uh, consuming as that for the children, which was the idea and the notion of Europe. You know, for me, I'm the result myself of a mixed marriage of different cultures and countries, so I always thought that diversity was the key to success uh, if you have a common purpose. So um, I uh, thought, okay, look, we're, we have all these countries that have managed to get past a devastating war, that uh, have had centuries of strife and conflict, and they said, okay, we have enough, we also have enough, we, we want to give uh, peace a chance and we want to start and looking at our differences and working together and actually doing something newer and bigger and greater. So hey, that's inspiring. I, I said, yeah, I want to be there. I want to do that. So that's what led me to Brussels and to, to uh, Belgium. And uh, there, to my surprise, I found uh, 30,000 equally uh, in Spain, you know, crazy people who also wanted to work for Europe and uh, thought that it was a great idea and they wanted to really, really work hard for it. Even if they're not always understood, uh, often under pressure and uh, asked to deliver, uh, they really think they're there because they want to do something greater and bigger. That's the way to go. So there was I uh, with two big colleagues, a large family and uh, working for Europe. And uh, how do I reconcile both things? That's a good question. Uh, and this is where I bring in the concept of, that I don't know if you're familiar with, uh, the concept of the syndrome the superwoman syndrome or the superwoman squeeze. So I imagine you can, you can imagine yourselves what it means. It means that you have got this woman who want to excel in different jobs or different tasks at the same time. They want to be the lovely housewife, they want to be the hard-nosed professional, they want to be the perfect spouse or partner. They want it all, you know, but um, can we manage all that? Uh, this is uh, something that, uh, that, uh, that how, how did we actually get to this situation? Well, you know that in the 70s and in the 80s, we started having a shift from the housewife role to the career woman. But unfortunately, in the way, the family got lost. And somehow, if you want a career, you have to renounce to the family. But no, the superwoman wants everything. She wants a family, she wants a kid, she wants a job, she wants a career, she wants everything. And uh, how can you do that? So there's this uh, writer, Mrs. Uh, Betty Friedman, uh, who wrote a book called The Second Stage. And then she talks about the double slavery that we have with the job and the family. Uh, how can we manage both things? I guess we have to change social values. We have to change the way our institutions are made in order to, to, to be able to, to have everything and not to renounce to anything. 
But I guess to, by this stage of the of the talk, I'm sure I can I can see two questions coming into your mind, into your brains. I'm sure that they're the right ones. The first one is, what ever possessed her to have eight kids? Why? And the second one is, how does she manage that and her job? So okay, for the first question, uh, why? Uh, it's a question that you are not surprised to hear. I get a lot, and uh, actually it's funny because people expect me to say that I am. Uh, part of a very sinister sect, or I am coming from an ultra-conservative ideology. And when I tell them the truth, which is uh, I like children, <laughs> it's my God, disappointment. You know, it's like, uh, well, no, it's so hard to process. It's so much easier to believe that I'm part of a fanatic group, you know, but yeah, I just like children. But in this society today that is so obsessed about consuming and consuming, and that we do not believe that we can live if we don't offer our kids the best, the, the most luxurious things, if we don't get the most luxurious things, you know, we have to, we, we have to we say, no, large family, we have to sacrifice everything in terms of finance, uh, in terms of responsibilities. But believe me, you know, I, um, I'm making a huge investment, as you can imagine, but it's ripping lots of benefits. And the second question, the how. <coughs> so I've got my little principles in life that I managed to get as I went along. The first one is, Every superwoman needs a superman. So, uh, well, I already dealt with that one at the beginning of the talk. I got the Dane, as I said before, uh, someone who's patient and who wants to collaborate. The second one is, okay, when you're completely overwhelmed and you cannot manage, what does anybody do? They outsource, right? So that is how one day I got this lovely lady knocking at my door saying I want a job. And then I was like, okay, I'm going to ask that terrible question that I always have to ask saying, okay, how do you feel about working in a house with eight children? And instead of the horror look and the stricken look that I usually get, she said, smiling and she said, hey, I am the eldest of 23. <laughs> so I said, wow. <laughs> so the full meaning of everything is relative just hit me. I said, okay, that's fine. You know, as regards uh, third point, very important ones, renounce to perfection. Perfection is impossible. Perfection is boring. Perfection is bad. Why try to be perfect? You know, no, I'm not trying to be perfect. Even if when I go to somebody's house and I see those beautiful white sofas, or when I saw this, this beautiful, you know, toy-free and clutterless uh, living room, or I look at the, at the walls and I don't see any zebras or giraffes handmade, you know, looking at me, uh, or when I go to the garden and actually <laughs> I can see the grass uh, growing and I can see flowers blooming, none of those things happen in my house. It's not perfect, but I can tell you it's a lot of fun. Or so I said to myself every morning as I get up. But you know, at least at home, I am the master of the rules, I am the master of the time, but unfortunately that's not the same thing. On the other side of my life, of the hard nosed professional, there, we, as I said before, I work for a wonderful institution um, that uh, has got a wonderful purpose and goal and very good rules, flexi time, teleworking, uh, part time. But as in everything, you know, rules are not in the void. Rules are part of a culture. And behaviors cannot be changed if we cannot change the culture. And what sort of culture do I have? I have a culture where you measure uh, input, you don't measure output. Where being in front of your computer, looking very earnest and serious, means that you're producing. But if you go home, you know, at the right time to meet your kids, it's not that you have managed to do your targets in an amazing efficiency and that you're a wonderful, rational, uh, hardworking professional. No, you're someone who's not interested in the career, who's not ambitious, and who doesn't want to have a real good uh, um, future in, in, in your organization. And I find that a pity because I say, if I would be a manager, you know, and somebody comes to me and she says, oh, but actually, I have got eight children, uh, I would say, well, that's ample proof that she can be razor sharp about priorities. She can really zoom in into the most essential. She can manage a team. She can deal with conflict. She can be cool under pressure and be really resilient. You get all those things in one package, you know? So I guess that is, <laughs> I have to be efficient here. So, <laughs> so as I was saying before, you know, we, why not uh, I, I, I understand that you might not be understanding my choice, that you're still wondering at this stage um, that you would never be able to do something like that. But believe me, for me, every single minute that I live uh, with it, that, uh, that I live in life, I really squeeze the most of it. I, I, I am present, I give, I take, and I just, uh, I just enjoy every second uh, of my life. But uh, having come full circle to the beginning of the talk, 
Uh, I can honestly say to you now that uh, eight is definitely more than enough. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs>